I'm here with Dr. Romano and we're going to do an organic chemistry sequence. Hi, I want to show you some really good questions for the DAT exam that you'll find very helpful. This is a tricky, tricky sequence and when you get to the death destroyer problems, this would make your life a lot easier. Let's go through them. What I'm going to do in the first step is I'm going to do an oxidation. So potassium dichromate is going to burn off anything made of carbon and has benzylic hydrogens, it's gonna burn it off and produce a carboxy acid group. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna burn the thing off as CO2 and water and leave behind the oxidative product, which will be benzoic acid. Once we get letter A, we're on to the next step, which is simply a halogenation, and this group is a metadirector. So we are gonna have the benzoic acid, the carboxy acid group, direct the chlorine into the meta position. And that would be letter B. Now we gotta start thinking. SOCl2 is simply gonna replace the OH group and produce an ACL halide. So that would give me this. And there's C. So far, so good. I'm being nice to you. The next step is letter D, and all letter D does is splits off HCl, so you would have NH3 coming in, so you can almost think of it as splitting off an H and a Cl, and that makes the amid. All right, the fun and games are now over. A, B, C, D is easy. The last three, I think, are a little bit tricky. Letter E, nine kids out of 10 will get wrong. Does anyone know what D to E is? When you have an amid and you treat it with either bromine or chlorine, an aqueous solution, that's going to do a reaction known as the Hoffman rearrangement. And you're going to decarboxylate the molecule and remove the CO group. In the mechanism, it goes off as CO2. If you want to discuss it with me in the Facebook study group, you may. Um, in the meantime, if you want to go to any book and simply look up something called the Hoffman Rearrangement. The Hoffman Rearrangement, you would be able to see the details. But to cut through all the bullshit for the DAT exam, you just remember if you see an amine, an amid, it's got two, it's got to have two H's on the A, on the end, it can't be substituted. So you have a primary amid with bromine base aqueous. You're going to remove the CO2 and get the NH2 group. That was a hard one. Go back to letter D and we're going to reduce the amid. Now this is another hard one. The reduction of an amid, what you would do, it converts the CH2 group into a CH2 group. So it's almost as if, I was telling my students last night, it's almost as if you were doing a Clemenson or a wolf kishner reaction, whereby we took the carbonyl group and we replaced it with a CH2 group. So the reduction of this amid ends up putting on a CH2 group. Once we're here, this will put me at letter F, and this would be letter F, sorry. And finally, the last one is letter H. We're going to hit this with excess bromine. Excess bromine, why don't we just make it two bromines? And if there's only two bromines, there's going to be two spots, main spots. This is going to be the more activating group. So I'm going to direct one bromine here and ortho to this group, and the other group would be para. So that would result in this molecule here. You would have the CH2, NH2, there's the Cl, you would get a bromine here, and you would get a bromine here. It's possible if you forced more excess to go here, but this is going to be a low probability because of the steric hindrance. But if there was excess bromine, I suppose you might catch a little of that. But with only two moles, you're pretty safe. Just go ortho and para and try to avoid going between two functional groups. 
such as this. So there you have it. In this sequence, A, B, C, D was straightforward. By the time you got to E, you had to do a Hoffman rearrangement. By the time you got to letter F, that's when you had to do the reduction of an amid, and then you simply brominated it. All right, that wraps this clip up. I hope this gives you some good understanding of some challenging questions.